Hello and welcome into the Nixverse. My name is George, and if this is your first time here, please subscribe, turn on the notification bell, or if you've been here before, please do so as well. And thumbs ups, very much appreciated, along with your comments. All right, uh, this video is going to be a little bit more uh, serious because tonight what I saw troubled me greatly, and it's not the loss. I did not expect to win tonight. It's the second game of a back-to-back, -back, third game in four. Uh, you know, they're on a road trip out west. It's a brutal stretch. Uh, they played Utah just la the night before, last night, in Utah, and then flew to uh, Denver to play uh, the Nuggets, who, uh, you know, they're uh, even, even without Murray, without uh, Michael Porter Jr., they're an outstanding team regardless. And it was going to be a challenge. And then the altitude... And then, remember, the Knicks on Saturday night played an overtime game against the Lakers, of which RJ played 50 minutes there. Yep. And then he played 43 minutes last night. And tonight, he played, let's see. Let's see how many minutes RJ played tonight. Look, see that? Uh, we lost 132-115. It was a blowout. I mean, that score is not even indicative. I mean, the Knicks were down by 27 points at one time. And you can see right here. Uh, they made a little bit of a baby run there to kind of make it respectable. And somehow, Thibs uh, just kind of lost his mind and he thought, oh, we have a chance to win this game. Even though the Denver starters weren't even in the game when that run happened. Uh, here we go. Actually, they were in the game when the run first started happening. And Malone, being, you know, a good coach that he understands his players... Uh, you know, limitations, he started subbing in players. And I'll get to that. And that helped kind of stopped the Knicks run because then what happened were the Knicks, because they were tired, they started making mistakes, which undid the run. But the second unit came in and started somehow getting it together because in the first half, as you, and you can see, look, that's when the game totally got out of hand in that first half when the second unit came in. The bench has not been having it lately. IQ's been struggling. Uh, the whole second unit has been struggling. and But they finally showed signs of life in that fourth quarter. And you know what? You're thinking, okay, third game out of, out of the last four days. We had an overtime on Saturday night. You know, why not let that second unit continue playing? And if you need to sub somebody in, look further down your bench, like Deuce. But no, no, Thibs doesn't do that. He lets RJ play 35 minutes tonight. So that means, that means this. RJ played 128 minutes in the last 76 hours and left limping to the locker room. Was it really necessary to put him back into this game when Taj fouled out? I am utterly stunned by Coach Thibs's cluelessness. Now let's get to it. Here we go. This was the play. 35 seconds left in the game. What's he even on the floor for? He jumps up and then he steps over. He tweaks his ankle because he's exhausted. He doesn't, he's, he doesn't even know where he is on the floor half the time. That's why they miss easy layups. Look at this. Eh, let's get even closer. We can see even how more how ridiculous this is. It happened right in front of Thibs too. Look, jumps up, turns, up, and He's bouncing around there, but he actually fell down to the ground. He laid there for a while, and he limped his way to the locker room. This is our number three pick, our, our second highest pick in 30 years since Patrick Ewing. What is he doing on the floor in garbage time? Seriously. This is, this is, uh, this is dangerous, man. Honestly, I don't even understand what was the game here. What is it that you're expecting? Why not put uh, Cam back in? Why not put Cam? Why isn't Cam Reddish in there instead of RJ at this moment? I am completely, utterly pissed off that this has happened here. Not only are we having almost a lost season right now. The Knicks have lost four in a row. And uh, where are we now? What's our record? Jesus. Whatever. Doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter. Our prized possession. I don't know, I call him a possession, but our, our you know, our prized asset, RJ Barrett, who's been been outstanding uh, since the beginning of, of this year, calendar year, since 2022, uh, then the calendar turn of 2022. 
And you can see his productivity numbers, his efficiency numbers have dipped because he's been playing way too many minutes. Actually, on the uh, pregame show, we had these stats up. He's been only, he's been shooting 24.1% from the three-point line in the past four games. 38.1% overall. Even though he had, but he's been averaging 40 minutes a game in the past four games. That was before tonight. He played last night. <sighs> ah, man, this is infuriating me. Now, let me get to this here. Let me show you guys something else while we're talking about this. So in that third quarter, in that third quarter, when there was a little bit of a run, Malone, he went, he substituted at the 335 mark when the score had been cut, the deficit had been cut to 15 points, where uh, it was 100 Denver, 85 Knicks, after being down like 24 points not that long ago. So nice, they made a little run. Often when, t when a team makes a run, they, they exert so much energy to cut a lead down that at some point fatigue is gonna hit, especially on the second game of a back-to-back. -back. Last night, they were in another state playing. But Malone, he subs in Bones Highland at the 335 mark for, for uh, Jokic, and he subs in uh, Jamichael Green for Monte Morris at the 335 mark as well. And they call a timeout. Does Thibs call, uh, sub anybody in? Nope, nope. And then, uh, before that, though, at the 4... 4.06 mark, the 4.20, yeah, 4.35 mark, uh, Zeke Nagy came in for Jeff Green. So already, so three starters had been subbed out in that third quarter by Denver. Meanwhile, nothing from Thibs. Thibs waited. This is an exhausted team, a team that last night was gassed. Remember Mike Breen said, Knicks look gassed against Utah. This is how long he took. He waited until, I had a whole graphic up and I forgot to include it in this thing. He waited until the 26.9, until there was 27 seconds left in the third quarter to start subbing people in. He brought in uh, Toppin, Jericho, Cam, and IQ. Yeah, so they, the starters played basically the entire third quarter. And then Thibs decided to bring them back in the game in the fourth quarter. Why? What was the point? What was the value? Let let the bench unit take it. Actually, the lead had ballooned back up to some like 20, and the uh, the bench were able to cut it down. I believe they got it as close as 13 points. And then Thibs had the brilliant idea. Oh, let me bring uh, my 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 tired as fuck starters back into this game and then look <laughs> look at that rj barrett tweaks his ankle we don't know we don't know now what's happened thibs hasn't said anything he didn't know what the status of it and the i haven't seen the post game i only uh saw some tweets and whatnot but i am utterly pissed this you can't do this this is this is almost malpractice in some ways you have to be cognizant of the condition of your players on the court you can't put them in dangerous positions especially rj especially when we are crying out as a fan base to give more minutes to the young guys this was the night to do it the second night of a back-to-back -back. <sighs> what the hell man I, I really, I just don't get it. <sighs> Look at that. Denver out rebounded us. Actually, you know, we shot, uh, you know, decently from the three-point line, even though it's about 35%, 15 to 43. Uh, only got to the free throw line 12 times. We hit 10 of them, though. First time in a long time we've gotten over 80% uh, free throws. Uh, we've made over 83 80% uh, free throws. Uh 25 assists, they out assisted us. They were moving the ball, they cut. They have players actually cut and then the guy with the ball actually passes it to them. Yeah, it's it's such a revolutionary concept. We never do it here. We never do that. Here, we do the lob. We do the lob, but a cut and feed? 
rarely does that ever happen. Fast break points, 21 to 8. The points in the paint were pretty similar. Uh, you know, Taj actually had a, a, a decent night. Uh, applaud to him because Mitch couldn't play tonight. Uh, New Orleans couldn't play either. Not only did we have a tired, fatigued team of starters, mostly, we were also down the first two centers in the depth chart. So think about it. Think about that. And yet Thibs still put the starters back in. Look at the largest lead, 27. We actually got off to a nice start in that first quarter. We gave up 83 points in the first half. That's the most we've given up all year in the first half. And we scored 60. We had a great first half offensively, but we allowed 83. That's called tired legs. Yes, they they you know they made their bucks. I mean, Fournier was electric. I think he hit uh, four or four three pointers in that first half. But we were we it was going to take a complete game effort for us to win tonight, and a collapse offensively on Denver's part for us to win tonight. You could see right away it wasn't happening. This game was over at halftime. Yes, we made a little bit of a run. But look at this. Now it may have cost us R.J. Barrett. I hope it doesn't. But that's not really the point. The point is that Thibs took a gamble. A gamble that wasn't worth it. And also doesn't even make any logical sense at all. This is the type of game that you give minutes extended time to your bench. So that when you actually need them, they've had that floor experience. I mean, Sims hasn't. I don't even know when the last time Sims even played. And he had to play meaningful minutes in the first half tonight. And that was part of the reason why we got outclassed. Here, show you the, uh, look, right there. When the league went out of hand, it's when Sims was in. Oh, I, I'm, not, I'm not mad at Sims. Yeah, he's barely played. He's a rookie. He's going up against an MVP. Oh, well, not, well, at that point, uh, I think uh, Jokic was, was out of the game. But regardless, you know, these guys, you, you don't just turn it on like that. That's why I've been crying out, extend the rotation dibs, F lessen the minutes load on your starters, give some of those extra minutes to the bench so that when you actually need them, when we're down a player or two, they're locked in. But instead, you ignore these cries. I don't know what's going on with you. Maybe you're desperate for your job. I don't know what it is. You have a nice contract. This is probably your last head coaching job unless you pull off some miracle this season. But you're making it worse. You have you you have regressed in your evolution from what you were as a coach back when you were with Minnesota and previously with Chicago. You had a I mean last year was eye opening. I, I saw a guy who, you know, was was listening to his players. Adversity reveals true care your true character. And the adversity of this season has made you default back to the coach you always were. And that is depressing for me, who has supported you, even though I'm hard on you. Even though I'm hard on you. I think you're a brilliant basketball mind. I have no doubt about that. But now, you have made me question whether you should continue as the coach of the New York Knicks. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want that instability. I don't. I want to finish this season out, and we will look at it again in the summer, in the off season. You know, the front office made mistakes in their free agent signings. Uh, they didn't give you the right players that you needed, apparently. So that is not on you. But how you have used them and how you have not motivated them is on you. And now, this is dangerous. This is the kind of stuff that makes fans lose their minds. I mean, you can't ignore, you can't ignore our voice. It, it's gonna be ridiculous if you ignore our voice. That's it, I'm done. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for watching this. My name is George, and uh, I hope that uh, RJ will be okay. But I hope that maybe this kind of like shook some sense into you, Thibs, 
and you start managing the minutes of your players much more efficiently. And I mean, look, I know I said it was over, but let me jump into this. Here's the other thing. When you stretch players so thin in terms of what they actually have, they can snap at any moment. And you're putting them in that dangerous position. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the thumbs up and drop your comments. I want to hear your feelings about all of this. And let's, uh, fingers crossed, that RJ is going to be okay. All righty. And I will see you guys, well, the next post game will be after the deadline, the trade deadline on Thursday. So it'll be interesting. But I'll be, I'm sure there'll be trades and stuff. Things will happen. So I'll be on uh, doing stuff, uh, doing videos and whatnot within the next uh, 30 something hours or so. All right, guys, get some good rest. And I will see you around the next one.